So I'd like to talk about some research that uh, ABES has done recently on the effect of climate change, or climate variability and change on uh, cropping farm productivity. So this research is documented in detail in an uh, ABES research report that will be available hopefully very soon uh, after this conference. So when we talk about productivity at ABES, we're generally talking about total factor productivity. So TFP, like crop yield, is a measure of output relative to input, the difference being that it's taking into account all of the farm outputs and all of the farm inputs. And this chart is showing you uh, average total factor productivity uh, of cropping farms in Australia, drawing on ABS farm survey data from 1978 to 2015. And TFP, um, these TFP numbers, they receive a lot of attention. Uh, there's a lot of focus on improving productivity and improving productivity is seen as uh, key to maintaining the profitability of the industry in the long run, particularly in the face of increasing uh, global competition. These numbers are used to assess whether we're improving farm technology over time, particularly whether all the investments that the industry and the government are making in research and development are generating a return. Now, as an indicator, you can see TFP is, uh, is quite noisy. In particular, it's correlated strongly with climate. So you can see there's really big uh, decreases in uh, the dry years. So ordinarily, we're pretty relaxed about that. And we say, well, yes, there's a bit of noise in the short run, but we can pretty much draw a line through that and talk about long run trends in productivity. But the problem, as we've heard, is that we now need to think about climate change. And we know that uh, there are climate change trends in temperature and rainfall. And we know from the earlier presentation that these are highly relevant uh, for cropping farms. So because the climate is changing over time, it makes it harder to interpret productivity trends. Uh, and it really means that um, we need to control for climate if we're really going to understand what's happening to underlying productivity. So the approach we take is very much a data-driven one. We are blessed at ABES to have uh, access to some really rich uh, farm-level data from our long-running farm surveys. So we're using here ABES Broadacre Farm Survey. Um, it's been running in more or less the same format for a very long time. We have data going back to 1978 till 2015. The Broadacre Survey covers around 1,300 farms a year. Uh, we're including in this around half of those farms, which is the cropping specialist farms and the mixed cropping livestock farms. And this map shows you the distribution of the cropping farms uh, in our sample over that period. And you can see it gives you pretty, pretty comprehensive coverage across the main uh, cropping zones. So we take that farm survey data and we combine it with climate data. We know the locations of all of these farms. Uh, so we can match up uh, the, the farms with rainfall data, maximum minimum temperatures, soil moisture data. Uh, and then what we have is basically a big regression problem. Uh, we're correlating uh, productivity with climate variables uh, at, in addition to a range of other control variables that we have in the survey. So things like the location of the farm, the size of the farm, the amount of livestock activity, the age of the farm operator, uh, amongst others. Okay, so once we do that, we have a model that we can use to predict what productivity of uh, these farms would be uh, under alternative climate conditions. And we actually do that for a 100 year sequence. We take climate data from 1915 up until uh, 2015. We simulate for each of those years what the productivity might have looked like for the individual farms. And we take the average across all of the farms and we take the average across the 100 years and uh, we get something that looks like that. So that's what we call our climate adjusted productivity on cropping farms, uh, which basically tells you uh, what would happen to productivity if uh, climate was at always at its long run average. So you can see we immediately have a much clearer picture of productivity trends. You can see really strong growth in productivity uh, through the 80s and early 90s, then a period where it's fairly flat, where it slows down. Uh, and then a period over the last 10 years or so from around 2007 8 where it looks like productivity has rebounded quite strongly. So this slowdown in productivity during the mid-90s has been something that's been well documented. It's been observed in a lot of other ABES studies and other research. There's been a lot of work to try to unpack some of the potential drivers. The potential um, rebound in cropping productivity that we're seeing here is a relatively new observation. 
uh, and there's still some work to be done to understand what's going on. One of the things we look at in the report is that it has been associated with uh, a significant increase in uh, capital investment on these cropping farms. We can also look at the effect of climate on uh, productivity. So that's that red line there. And uh, I can add the moving average of that as well. So you can see that um, over this period, there's been a deterioration in the climate conditions for cropping. So this is aggregating the effect of the higher temperatures and lower rainfall. Uh, and so this deterioration in climate has been offsetting uh, these productivity gains. So the story here is not dissimilar to the wheat yield story that uh, Zvi presented uh, earlier. Um, there has been some uh, consistent growth in productivity on cropping farms over the last decade, but it's been difficult to observe that in the raw numbers because it's been hidden by this deterioration in climate. So we can have a look at a map of what that looks like, and this map showing you uh, the effect of climate since 2000 uh, on the total factor productivity of cropping farms across Australia. So the general story there is not dissimilar to uh, the winter rainfall map that we saw earlier. And winter rainfall decline has been the main driver here. So you're seeing more severe impacts on farm productivity in uh, southwestern Australia and southeastern Australia. Um, having said that, there are some important differences. So one thing that jumps out is that in, in terms of the effect on productivity, the more severe impacts have occurred, have tended to occur in the lower rainfall uh, more inland parts of the cropping zone. So the northern part of the western cropping zone, uh, the more inland part of the New South Wales cropping zone. Uh, whereas you can see there are some areas in high rainfall zones, particularly, for example, the uh, southern coastal area in Victoria, where the changes in climate <coughs> haven't had uh, much of an effect. And actually, if anything, uh, there's some areas where there's been some slight improvement. So the basic story there is that those areas that are already relatively low rainfall, they're relatively high expo highly exposed to any further reductions in rainfall or increases in temperature. Conversely, areas, uh, agricultural areas that already are in high rainfall zones, um, they're not necessarily going to experience much of a, a negative if rainfall uh, goes down. And particularly, it's possible that some of these high rainfall zones may actually become more attractive uh, to broadacre cropping with a reduction in rainfall um, because they may, there may be less water logging. So we've also done a similar analysis for wheat yield. So using the exact same uh, data sources from ABS farm surveys and the same methods. And uh, it's nice that uh, the results here seem fairly similar to what we're seeing in total factor productivity. They're also quite similar to the work that uh, CSRO and, and SV's team have, have been, been able to put together with uh, you know, slightly different data sets and very different methodologies. So again, the story is, is that uh, productivity was strong uh, during the 80s, there was a bit of a slowdown, and there's evidence of a, a rebound over the last decade, but this has been masked uh, by the deterioration in climate. So uh, similar to SV, we've also done a bit of work for this conference to add on some projections for 2017. So the model uh, only includes uh, farm level data up until 2015, but we have climate data up until the present day. We can use that to project wheat yields at the farm level out to 16, 17. And uh, we see the chart looks like that. And incidentally, ABARE's official wheat yield uh, estimate for 16.7 is pretty much bang on what this, this model is predicting. So clearly 2016 was a very good year. According to our model, it's the best year for uh, broadacre cropping farms uh, from a climate perspective since 1994. It's not necessarily an outlier uh, in any sense if you look at the full 100 years. Uh, there have been plenty of years uh, of this quality or better. But it is a really dramatic improvement over what we've seen over the last 20 years. Um, it really also serves to demonstrate the, the need to control for climate when you're analysing this data. So if you look at the orange line here, if you were just looking at the raw data, you'd be forgiven for thinking that you know, from 1990 until 2015, 16, there'd basically been no improvement in productivity at all. And then we'd hit 16, 17, and suddenly we've had some miraculous productivity breakthrough. Right? And the reality is that 
Productivity has actually been improving pretty consistently over the last decade. It's just that we haven't been able to see it uh, because of the deterioration in climate. Okay, so in addition to uh, looking at productivity under average conditions, we can also use the model to look at productivity under dry and wet conditions. So for example, that red line is showing you what the product, average productivity of these farms would look like if every farm in every year was experiencing uh, a 1 in 20 drought, and that green line is showing you what would, the productivity would look like if every farm was experiencing wet conditions. So one of the unique features of the model is that it uh, can detect changes in the way farmers respond to climate shocks over time. So the model can tell that farmers in 1978 respond to a given climate shock differently to farmers in 2015 because their technology is different. As a result, the sensitivity of farms to climate, the gap between those lines actually changes over time. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to see that there, so I redraw re the chart looking just at the gap between those lines. So there's a couple of things to take from this chart. Firstly, you can see these two lines tend to move together. So what it's suggesting is that uh, farm technologies that help uh, improve performance in good years also have the, a tendency to increase exposure to negative climate shocks. So an example here would be, say, a farm adopts a strategy of applying uh, lots of fertiliser um, that's going to help boost yields in good years but it's potentially going to mean uh, lower productivity in dry years if it doesn't add to yield much and you've still got to pay for all that fertiliser. Um, so you can see that what happened during the 90s is that there was basically a widening of this gap. And this is an observation that's been made in previous work, uh, basically that during the 90s there was a real focus in the cropping sector on much more intensive production systems, so higher input use, higher fertiliser, uh, and greater specialisation in cropping, less, um, less livestock activity. So this basically had the effect of improving productivity in good years and getting us closer to that kind of potential yield that V was talking about, but also increased exposure to negative climate shocks uh, right at a time when the, the climate was really starting to become more variable. What we can also see from the data is that this last 10 year period when productivity has been improving, we've seen a narrowing of this gap. So not only has average productivity been, been going up, but farmers have been reducing their exposure to climate variability, and particularly they've been improving their performance uh, at, during dry years. So it really suggests that what we're seeing is not just business as usual productivity improvements, but a genuine adaptation to the, the more variable conditions, the lower rainfall conditions that these farms are now confronting on a regular basis. So one last result I wanted to show you from the model is uh, some uh, changes in the, the location of cropping activity across Australia. So um, one potential source for changes in productivity is movements of farms between uh, good and bad areas. So the, the relative productivity of different parts of Australia varies quite dramatically, largely due to differences in rainfall. So you could imagine, for example, if there was a lot of uh, cropping activity moving into low rainfall areas, that this would have a negative effect and, and vice versa. Now what we actually detect in ABARES farm survey data is over the last 20 years a gradual shift of cropping activity away from lower rainfall, lower productivity areas to higher rainfall areas. Now we, we've gone to some effort in our report to um, combine this data and, and check it against other data sources, particularly ABS uh, agricultural census data. And the trends that we see there are quite consistent with what the ABS data is picking up. You know, so the basic story is that there has been a shift, particularly in Southern Australia, towards a greater share of cropping activity occurring in uh, the Southern high rainfall zones, particularly that coastal area in, uh, in Victoria and uh, the Southern part of Western cropping zone and relatively less cropping activity occurring in some of those lower rainfall areas, particularly the northern part of the WA cropping zone and that inland part of New South Wales. So that's occurred primarily through expansion in cropping in the higher rainfall zones, but there is now evidence, particularly over the last 10 years, of some absolute declines in cropping activity in some of those lower rainfall areas. So it's interesting to combine this with the climate maps that we showed earlier. So 
you, you can clearly see that some of those areas that have experienced the most severe effects uh, due to the climate trends are those areas where the amount of cropping activity is deteriorating. Uh, conversely, areas that haven't been affected by climate or where climate may have actually become more amenable uh, to cropping, there's actually more cropping activity. So there are potentially many other drivers of changes in location of cropping, commodity prices, changes in technology, but it seems unlikely that the trends in climate that we're seeing aren't having at least some effect on this movement. So the, the key points I wanted to make, um, if you're going to look at productivity, you really need to control for climate, not just in the short term, but in assessing long term trends. When you do control for climate, you see a much clearer picture of what's happening. You see that uh, productivity growth was really strong uh, during the 80s and early 90s, then it slowed down, and then you can see a rebound over the last decade. The other uh, conclusion from this work and from the, the studies we've heard earlier is that climate change is having a really significant effect on the Australian cropping sector. So we know that there are climate change trends in temperature, we know that there are climate change trends in rainfall. We know that these are happening in a happening in a way and in a location that is highly relevant for the cropping sector. So there has been a significant negative effect, particularly of the decline in winter rainfall, on the crop yields and the productivity of the farms uh, that are specialising in broadacre cropping. The good news is that there's a lot of evidence that farmers are adapting to these trends. So um, our work shows that cropping farm productivity has improved consistently over the last 10 years and this improvement has helped these farms offset the deterioration in climate. But more than that, we can see that the productivity improvements are specifically targeted towards improving uh, performance in dry years and reducing exposure uh, to negative climate shocks. So yeah, that's it. As I said, um, the report will be out uh, soon after the conference. Thanks.